with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. I thank you. I now give the floor to those council members who wish to make a statement. I now give the floor to representative of United States. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, Pres uh, Special Coordinator Winsland, for your briefing today and for your latest report. The world's eyes are rightfully on Gaza, but we cannot ignore the situation in the West Bank. Last year saw the highest number of Palestinians killed in the West Bank since the UN began collecting data in 2005. Six months into 2024, the number of Palestinians killed in the West Bank remains deeply alarming. We're concerned by the significant uptick in deadly violence against Palestinian civilians by settlers in the West Bank and condemn it in the strongest terms. We urge Israel, working in coordination with the Palestinian authorities, to prevent these attacks. Colleagues, we reiterate our position that advancing Israeli settlements in the West Bank is an obstacle to achievement of a two-state solution, the end state we all want to see as we seek to bring the fighting in Gaza to a close. Further, we reiterate our belief that Israel's program of support for the expansion of settlements is inconsistent with international law and only serves to weaken Israeli security. In addition, we remain deeply concerned about violence committed by extremist settlers in the West Bank. As you know, the United States has sanctioned a number of extremist settlers and their organizations involved in acts of violence. We, are, we have also sanctioned the violent extremist Israeli group Zod 9, which has repeatedly sought to thwart the delivery of aid to, to Gaza, including aid transiting the West Bank. And earlier this month, the United States designated a militant Palestinian group, Lion's Den, for violent activity in the West Bank. These sanctions implemented under an executive order that aims to promote peace, security, and stability in the West Bank make clear that we will act in response to acts of violence in the West Bank, whoever the perpetrators may be. And we will use the tools at our disposal to expose and promote accountability for those who threaten peace, security, and stability there. To that end, we commend the Palestinian security forces as well as the Palestinian Authority for their efforts in maintaining peace and security in the West Bank. It is also essential the Palestinian Authority have the resources it needs to pay the salaries of those security forces and more broadly to govern effectively. The U.S. government will continue to engage the government of Israel to release the full clearance revenues due to the PA on time every month, including the transfers that Israel has not sent since April 5th. We encourage all members here today to provide support as needed in the interim to mitigate against a potential PA financial collapse. Of course, Israel and Palestinians need to have faith in the Palestinian Authority's ability to govern as a non-corrupt, fateful actor working in the interest of the Palestinian people. It is essential, therefore, that the Palestinian Authority work to reform itself and that it do so as quickly as possible. Colleagues, with regard to Gaza, a few weeks ago, the Council adopted Resolution 2735, which urged Hamas to accept the deal put forward by Israel and called on all parties to implement the three phases of that deal. Unfortunately, Hamas has eschewed the calls from this council and ignored voices from across the international community. In fact, rather than accept the deal, Hamas has added even more conditions. But we have not given up. We're working closely with Egypt and Qatar to see if there are ways to bridge the gaps and achieve an immediate ceasefire with release of hostages. The reality is 
that as Hamas continues to ignore this council and the readiness of Israel to move forward on a deal, the world is not standing still. People are suffering every single day. Palestinian children, women, and men suffering every single day. From our perspective, it's time to end the intransigence from Hamas, start a ceasefire, and release the hostages. We will continue to do the hard work on the ground with Egypt, Qatar, and Israel to make that a reality, and we encourage all UN Security Council members to support those efforts. As we have said since October 7th, ensuring the sustained delivery of aid to people in need, both into and within Gaza, is a top priority. This is a message we have delivered consistently and will continue to reiterate going forward. As the latest IPC report makes alarmingly clear, humanitarian needs inside Gaza are catastrophic, and humanitarian assistance must be scaled up and reach all in need across all of Gaza. With much of Gaza's population facing catastrophic levels of hunger, the situation is at risk of worsening rapidly, especially with sustained disruptions in aid flows. We also consider the security of UN personnel and aid actors on the ground a top priority, and we continue to press Israel to create better conditions for facilitating aid delivery inside Gaza. In order for humanitarian organizations to be able to safely continue their life-saving work, the IDF must implement concrete actions to protect humanitarians and improve the overall security environment inside Gaza. The lack of an effective deconfliction mechanism nearly nine months into the conflict is unacceptable and continues to put humanitarian actors at tremendous risk. But again, we cannot ignore that Hamas is standing in the way of the deal that this council endorsed and continue to put Palestinian civilians at risk. From our perspective, it's time to end the intransigence from Hamas, start a ceasefire, and release the hostages. We will continue to do the hard work of diplomacy on the ground with Egypt, Qatar, 